you guys welcome back to my channel <laughs> we're just gonna get right into it <sighs> you already know Chris squares me out with a K and we're gonna have to get to him last so I'm gonna do what I always do I'm gonna start off with the couple that I wrote the least amount of notes for which is once again Brown and Vin so um I wrote that Brianna still thinks that being bossy is a like a like a character like a quality like an attribute no it's not cute it's 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 something that you should probably work on um she says that she sees where her bossiness can help him ma'am he's a person not a project i'm confused what are you talking about um vincent said thinks that her bossiness is going to be an issue it is and we're going to see later that it is an issue um, I think that Vincent is not problematic. She just seems to be being impatient with him. She was giving an example of how like long he takes to get ready. Men don't take as long as us to get ready. They can literally take a shower in a minute, put their clothes on and go out the door. And she was basically, I feel like she moms him. And he doesn't need a mom, he needs a wife. Um, that night when they were talking and she was like, you annoyed me today. She turned off the lights. They came back and Vincent had done had a talking to with her. And I feel like when they went on their day date, because they had gone indoor skydiving, I feel like the talking to helped her to act a little better. She's probably not used to having a man be like assertive. And you and it, because of the type of man that he is, you're you're gonna have to scale it back, sweetheart. Just, just scale it back. Okay. We're done with her. Surprisingly. I have a lot to say this week about folks I didn't have much to say about last week. So next, we're going to do um, Eric and Virginia. One of my favorite YouTubers calls her vodka. It's hilarious. I try, I have to remember her name is not vodka, it's Victoria. What is it, Virginia? See what I'm talking about? So this show actually started with them. They were waking up and she was like, she needs a drink, ma'am. Before you wash your face, brush your teeth, go pee, you need a drink? Alcohol for breakfast? Okay. Um, Eric was like, he feels like he's on cloud nine. Sir, you're drunk. Okay? That's what you are. You on, you're drunk. You're not on cloud nine, you're drunk. He's, I put, um, that Eric was, in, was drunk, talk about how love he was in, how much he was in love. I feel like his love was based in drunkenness because you don't know her. I've been married at this point five days. You don't know this girl. Eric thought that they had no issues. So like they had gone on separate outings and the girls had went for cocktails, which was quite up, right up Virginia's alley. And then the guys had went to go play a game of craps. So <laughs> Eric was like, her and I are like just meshing well. We have no issues. Cut scene to her saying, yeah, there's been a couple of issues that have come up. The, the issue is Eric thinks you're his possession, not his spouse. <laughs> That's the issue right there. There, I've, What's amazing to me is how they're both in the same marriage, but having a completely different experience. Like. He, what he describes as going on is not what she described. They are not experiencing the, they're literally at the same places at the same time, having two completely different experiences because what she think is going on is not what she think is going on, which is interesting to me. She says that when they were sitting down talking at the outing, one of the things that she brought up was when she was bringing up a few issues is how he is this is, a, again, where I feel like the experts do the people a disservice, where they match them with somebody who's so completely opposite to them. He's very conservative, which means, you know conservative means, men, gender roles is this and blah, 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 and all that stuff. And she's like, my sister's gay, I'm pro-life. I'm No, she's pro-choice and pro, you know, I just feel like people should be able to do, <sighs> why y'all put them together, hmm? Come, like how they were like how they view the world is completely different and I don't know why they do that other than to to drum up something for television and then she said that 
he's had an issue with her being semi-promiscuous. Ma'am, why is that his business? What you've done with your vagina before you met him is none of this stranger's business. And who wants to know? Huh? What are you gonna do with the information? Besides later on use it against you. Watch. Um, she's much younger than him, but I feel like as much as she's younger than him, she's not as old as him, but she's just as grown. And he acts like she's not as grown as him. Yes, she's a party girl. Yes, all of these things, but she's just as grown as you, in spite of her not being as old as you. Hmm. Eric realized finally that Virginia has a drinking problem. Ray Charles, dead and blind can see. What are you talking? Okay. I'm happy you, you finally joined the party. I don't feel like she's ready to be married because she still wants the party. Like, I... And he mentioned again that she's married now. They're not gonna make it. So next will be Ryan and Clara. Ryan being so routine is getting a little, give it, it's giving me boring vibes. It's giving me, we're gonna eat the same thing every day. It's giving me, you're gonna comb your hair in the same direction every day. It's giving me boring. It's giving me worse to life. Is giving me that we have 365 days to live and you're doing the same thing for 365 of them. I don't like it. I don't like that he thinks it's cute either. Sir. Ryan asks, what is your favorite high school memory? Her response was she would like being in the choir and because she had a lot of solos. Ryan said that he was the class clown. Where? He's, he hasn't even said anything remotely funny. I was the class clown. As you guys can tell, I'm still a clown. Am. <laughs> what? Who's, who's the judges? He is so serious and routine and it's, it's giving me big boring vibes. He asked her like what kind of guy she used to date and she was like, guys who didn't like me, ha 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 ha. No. And then Ryan was sitting there like, because this is why we need a therapy so we can deal with our issues. Sweetheart, you meant that. What was the joke? What was funny? It, it's not funny. It's not funny that you've been in relationships with guys who don't like you that's sad. And I know you're sad. So why are you laughing about it? Just be sad. Let me your truth. That's disheartening because it is. Okay? <laughs> therapy. Ryan dropped to her. I didn't know that she didn't know, but Ryan finally dropped that I've never told anyone I love them bomb. And then they cut to like her confessional and she's crying because like how we feel, she's somebody who's always been in, like she's been in love multiple times and he's somebody who's never said, I love you. Once again, what are we doing? Huh? Huh, experts? They just need to start calling them the people who put people together. Just call them the matchmakers because experts has a connotation that they, that, it don't describe them because ain't no way Chris and Paige, ain't no way Chris made it to the show and y'all was experts in anything. So she thinks that it's a bad match because the him not being in love thing. And then they edited it in a, such an awful way because literally it's one scene which the one scene she's crying, I think it's a bad match. Then the next scene, they're all together and she's saying that if she could create a perfect husband, Ryan would pop out. It's no continuity. Like what? You just gonna cut and paste it how you want to? We, you literally just went from it's not gonna work to he's the perfect husband. Now the fans, we confused now. It, do she love him or hate him? What are we doing? She wrote that she can't see, um, she says she can't see their issues and they're like, relationship when she was describing how he was the perfect husband, I can. The religion thing is a big one. The religion thing, him being religious, him never being in love, those are big issues. So I don't know why you acting like you don't see it, but you did see it because you was crying and saying it wasn't gonna work. But they edited the show backwards. They, then like later on, um, this is after we're gonna talk about the altercation. Um, 
I did not like, and I have to say this now because I'll probably forget later. I did not like when they had the pillow talk about what happened that day, how she lo how Ryan low-key blamed her for Chris's actions. Chris is a grown man acting a child, a fool, a scammer. Okay? That's not that baby's fault. You're not going to blame her. Is Haley and Jacob. Y'all. Don't think I'm crazy. I'm kind, I'm low key starting to feel Jacob. I think he's kind of cute. I know he's weird. I think he's kind of cute, but I like how he don't be with the the he don't be with it. They were sitting around the table. This one it was it was at the the craps game. They're at their outing, and Eric going on and on and on about how perfect Virginia is. What's his face? Clean cut them off. Cut Eric off and was like, nah. That ain't my story. <laughs> That's right, Jacob. Tell your truth. Because the truth is, is y'all haven't been married long enough to know anything about each other, to know any... Pro and I know the producers be feeding y'all questions, but you being drunk is not helping. Jacob isn't sure um, about all the friends that Haley has. Apparently, she got a whole bunch of friends, and he is, he's a little worried about the expectation is that because she has all of his friends, like she's gonna expect him to be like a part of the friend circle. And he doesn't know how he feels about that, which I understand. I, even in my current relationship, he has like a lot of friends. And I felt like because I hadn't been around for so long, I'm having to, I had to like fit myself in. I got into, since I started living like authentically, I feel like I fit in more than I did before, but yeah, I ain't for everybody and everybody ain't for me. Okay. What else? Haley and Jacob had the sex. They had got drunk and she was like, well, he's my husband. I'll have to sleep with him. Haley is starting to like Jacob, so she said. They have a lot of like weird silence in their conversations. You could tell it's almost like you have to spoon feed them things to talk about. It's getting a little annoying. Um, Jacob doesn't know if Haley likes him. She doesn't. Like, if you gotta question it, they don't. I put, Jacob is cute to me. Jacob may, I realized from this episode that Jacob may be the most level-headed husband of them, like, of them all. Mostly probably because he's the oldest, but he's the most level-headed in the sense that he feels like you have to go into this giving it an honest try. He said that he, Pastor Cal, had told them to lean in to like really making it like work. He says, or you look like don't don't view it. How did he say? It? He was like Pastor Cal said, don't view it as like um, like a first date or something. He says because you look up and then you guys are friends and divorced. He wanted them to view it like long term, like not viewing it as you know. I know you guys just met, but like we have to be dealing with the stuff that that matters in the long run. And Jacob was like, I leaned into what Pastor Cal said. And I was like, Jacob, thank you. Um, and I know, he, I feel like he knows too what needs to happen in order for it to be successful. And Haley is just like, no, I'm not doing that. It was something she said that I was like, so basically you came on the show to get married, to not have a marriage make it make sense to me she was like we're just on two we're in two different places about this relationship he's your husband he's all he's trying to do is get to know you so that he can be a good husband you are so dead set in me and i know my i'm independent been independent strong all that cute stuff but when i decided i wanted to date i was like okay there's a there's some little things you're gonna have to let go of and she views like I said in that first episode, the first the first episode, you can't view this negatively if you're trying to make it work. Him wanting to talk to you is what husbands should want. I know people who were married and their husbands didn't talk to them. You heard me say, we're married? Because that doesn't work. You guys not talking about nothing and, and just, you need your time. You've had seven years. How much more time do you need with yourself, ma'am? Jacob is ready, but Haley thought Haley Bone thought she was ready because she ain't ready. Now, there's two more things. Um, because I don't like because I've started to like Jacob, it's upsetting me and my homegirls. 
that she pretended like she was having a girl's night and then he'd go downstairs to get something to eat and she'd up with the other couples. What? What, what, what are we doing? Because you need, let me guess, you needed a moment alone? Because seven years wasn't enough? You needed another moment alone? But you weren't alone, that's the gag. You just don't want him there. That's hurtful to him and I do not like you hurt in Jacob's feelings because I like Jacob. Right here. So we're gonna go through Paige and Chris. I feel like we need to go over the outings first because the outings will explain some of this stuff that's going on. So they had a couple of outings. There was a group, um, a couple of group outings. The first one was where the girls went to cocktails and then the boys went to play craps. Virginia was in heaven at the cocktail thingy. And then dropped the drink because she probably was already drunk because all she's been this season is drunk. Um, Clara doesn't, wasn't feeling Chris. Not, now from watching it, none of them are. He's this season's Brett. Um, last season they ain't like Brett, like none of them. This season, they don't like Chris. I feel like the women were lying about how great their marriage is. It's all cap. Paige is clearly undone this episode. She's so sad. And it's so sad to watch. Um, when the boys went to play the crap, <sighs> Eric and Virginia don't have sex. I put they don't have sex because of whiskey dick. Sir, you probably too drunk to even get your penis hard. That's why you don't have sex. So I like how so passionate. Y'all be drunk. You can't have sex drunk. You can, but you shouldn't. So y'all be too drunk to have sex. Tell us the truth. Um, I put that Eric needs to shut up and mind his business because he was sitting there telling Chris about how he needs to man up because he drunk. You need to man up. Chris was like, I am manning up. And to Chris's point, I do agree that he was manning up in some sense. Like, get out his face. So then they went on an ATV trip. This is what this is what things went left, y'all. <laughs> They went on an ATV trip. Um, can somebody tell me what Bruce Viana was and Harry, um, Haley and Jacob? They was busy, they had the things to do. Hmm? But they was on. Where were they? Anywho, Clara and Virginia were kind of in Chris's grill asking him, if you guys is concerned with Paige, talk to Paige. Paige is here. So why are you talking to Chris if your concern is Paige? And I do agree that they should have been minding their business because y'all know I'm team. I'm, I'm an advocate for minding the business that pays you. And they were minding his business. And I did not like when Virginia was like, because if you were my husband, he's not. Your husband is somewhat drunk or whatever he's doing. He's not your husband, so shut up. And the truth is, is you don't know this man to know what your husband would do. Okay? Mind it, your business. Virginia did apologize to Chris about the, is it your baby thingy? And he said she made it, I don't think she meant it jokingly. I think she was legit asking a question. She was drunk, so it was, it was, it was like silly and goofy, but I think she really was asking you, do you know if the baby is yours? That was, I don't think she was being funny. Um, she did apologize for that. He wasn't hearing it because he had decided he wanted to be married. He claims that they have fake concern I don't think that they're fake concern. I think that his issue is, is that they're not concerned about him. He needs the attention to be on him. And because, because that little boy needs therapy, that little boy that's living inside of this grown man, he doesn't know how to phantom the idea that, that sometimes it ain't about you. We're concerned for her because you just said on national television that your baby mama is pregnant. That's devastating. So like their their concern is Paige as it should be. Sir, we're not concerned with you. Um, Him choosing to be an asshole when they got like, so after the ATV thing, he was like, when we get on this, he like made up his mind when he get on the bus, he was gonna make life a living hell for them. Why man of God? Hmm? What, huh? And told her F, he said F you so many times to that girl. But let Paige tell it, it's somehow God's will. I just can't imagine that all the things that God could be doing, this is what he do. This is what he wants for you. And 
So after that, they um, they were they got together again that evening after the whole like blow up where he cut. And then he's like cussing. Ryan and Clara sitting in between just minding their business. So he's cussing the girl, them out across him because they were in the seat, two seats up. So he's going off over these people's head. It's just, Ryan better than most men. Cause I don't know many, many openly black men. Cause I don't think Ryan is um, openly black, but openly black men are not gonna let you yell over them. He would have gotten bust. It would have been like, you can do whatever you're going to do, but you're not going to do it on top of me. Yeah. So later on, they get together for dinner. He apologizes to them for, for, he, Paige helped him realize that him disrespecting women was problematic. Paige needed to help your 27 year old self know that you shouldn't curse women out. You shouldn't curse women out. You shouldn't put your hands up at them. Paige needed to tell you that, man of God. And um, he talked about how she had prayed for him the other day. She, he had called his grandma to get prayer. His grandma was like, you got a wife now. And it was, then he wanted to tell this whole spiel about how amazing Paige was because she prayed for him. And she's been able to be to him what he, all of these years he's gone to his grandma for prayer and now she can pray for him. Okay. That's how I feel about that. Okay. And then I feel like he is utterly confusing because one second he's like, he wants everything to be private. Leave him alone. I was so upset with Eric because he's in my personal business. And then the next, literally next breath, it's, I want to apologize publicly to my wife. Sir, is it private or public? Which one is it? Are you, are you being private about your marriage or are you being public about it? Because all of that stuff you said about your wife was not, if you was gonna come there and apologize, you should apologize to them. Telling all that about you, how your wife is really being a woman of God, how you wasn't being a man of God. That's y'all business, remember? That's the business that's y'all. Which one is it? It's, he's so wishy-washy, double-minded. So, the whole time they carry on and all stuff, Jacob, all Jacob wanna know is, he was like, well, I don't know if Chris being sincere because I don't know him. I don't know if he was genuine, being genuine, but I know I'm hungry and I just hope my food comes. <laughs> Jake is low-key, we call it my favorite. Um, so, Eric comes, Eric and Virginia come late. Chris has done his entire apology. He went on his apology tour. Erica and Virginia, Eric and Virginia come late again. As soon as Eric sit down, sits down, he proceeds to check Chris about how he talks to his wife. Now, what I will say is that Eric gives that big, I don't know if you guys know, like they're like back when people was being really racist, white men used to call black, black men boy as a way of being disrespectful. And I feel like the way Eric tries to talk to Chris is giving me big boy vibes. And I under, as much as I don't like Chris, I understand how you're not gonna talk to me like that. You're not gonna one, tell me how I need to man up when I am being a man. You're not gonna two, tell me about how I'm not gonna talk to your wife. You didn't even come into the, you, you read the, they don't have no read the room ability. Like last week they just came in, <laughs> read the room. When y'all sat down, y'all should have said, hey, what y'all talking about? Had they done that, then it would have been, Oh, well, Chris was in the middle of apologizing to us for what happened earlier. And I believe had they done that, the conversation could have gone differently. But you come in, talk about how he ain't gonna talk to your wife. Chris was like, but what you gonna do, sir? Cause I'll, cause I'll bust, I'll, I'll beat, you, beat you down across the table. So I, initially, because I don't like Chris, I was like, oh, he's being, but whatever. But I understand why Chris was like he was because if somebody comes at you, your natural instinct is to defend yourself. So he was being defensive because you came at him. I get it. I'm gonna give you a look that much grace because you see what I said, that much. That's all you can get for that. Um, I put that Eric and Virginia being late again and missing what's important is annoying. Make them be, what, what, what are they doing that they can't be on time? Cause it ain't cause like she putting on some cute makeup and dressing nice. What are they doing? He he always got on t-shirt and, and little ugly pants. She always got on something that's not, that you can literally slink on. 
what are they doing? I put that Eric needs to watch his tone because Chris is very much a man. That's Eric's problem is he doesn't know who's an adult and who's not. These are grown-ups. Your wife is an adult. You don't own anybody. We, we don't own people anymore. We don't do that anymore. Okay, Eric? All right. Anywho, Vincent, when it was when it was about to fight, Vincent clean, big swole, got in the middle, was like, no, oh, Chris, stop, stop. I was like, that's right. Be the muscle in the group. <laughs> um, I feel like before the before it escalated, Ryan did try to defuse it. Ryan was like, hold up. You wasn't here. Chris was apologizing. And then Chris was like, I'm gonna let you finish, but I'm gonna go off still because it was how Eric came to the table. So I had to say all of that so that we can then go back <laughs> to Paige and Chris. Always, it keeps, it feels like it's always something with Chris. And then even on this episode, it was, I gotta apologize constantly for him being an ass. Who wants to, and like she said, one of the things she has said is that she doesn't want their relationship to become, we don't want, oh crap, come here come Chris and Paige because it's always something. And we know people like that. We all know that couple that we don't really want to invite. Paige keeps mentioning these vows. Ma'am, he hasn't lived up to one of the vows yet, so why are you mentioning them? He didn't even look you in your eyes when he said these, these, these probably somewhere made up sound great vows. He does not mean what, he did not mean his vows. I wish you could get that through your sweet little head, sweetheart. He didn't mean nothing. that. He was just saying stuff because it sounded good. Chris said that um, he confessed to her. You keep saying that you confessed, you were coerced into telling her. That's not the same thing as a confession. A confession is being forthcoming. You were coerced, you were told you need to tell her. And then you felt like you had no choice, so you did. Let's not let's not stand on ceremony, Mr. Wayne. Um, Chris commended Paige for how she's handling Baby Gate with grace. She she has been gracious to Baby. He keeps mentioning putting her first. I feel like he's trying to convince himself that that's true. Because if it was true, you don't have to. Every every time we turn around, you're saying that. It's, it's manipulation, it's not, you don't believe that. You just wanna keep saying it so that she keeps being around. And, ha keep, and have her around for what? I will never understand keeping good women around just to mistreat them. What is this for? <sighs> so he told, when he, he asked her what they was gonna do when they got back home, and she was like, she, she something about, oh, what she was gonna take to the to the new place with her. She was like, you know, probably the wedding gifts. He was like, if it's some money, we need to split it 50-50. What? What are we talking about? Then the money thing, that's how we're gonna stay in the vein of the money. He says he needs to split the money 50-50. He then goes on to tell her that he, he doesn't, he doesn't believe in joint accounts, sir. You believe? That's something you say about ghosts. Or, I don't believe in aliens. You, you don't believe in joint accounts? What? It's probably because you're a scammer and you don't want her to know. Tell the truth. I'm I'm a scammer and if, she, if our money was together, she'd see that it's a scam. And then he goes on to say that she makes, she was like, I make a third of what you make. He was like, no, you actually make a quarter. So she makes a quarter of what you make and you want to split the wedding money half and half and not have your guys, she wants her, he just gonna give her money for stuff she needs. That don't even sound true. And since when was being a scammer lucrative? Cause let me find out. Cause if she makes as an, I think she has an accountant, if she, as an accountant, if she makes a, a quarter of what he makes, scam, what, sign me up, I'll scam. Cause it, it clearly is lucrative because he's scamming. Big, big, big scam energy. He then goes on when they were talking. So after after the whole fiasco at dinner, they were later on talking. And he goes on to tell her that he still loves his ex. They have been in conversation about how they're gonna raise the baby. He says, this is why I told you earlier where he'd be being confusing. He says that they have been in conversation about raising the baby. He don't want another man to raise his baby. So what you're saying is that you want to be there. 
no, I'm not saying that. Well, then what are you? If you don't want another man to raise your baby, are you insane? So either she's going to not date anybody for 18 years or you're going to be with her. It's only one or two options because any good man is not going to just... He's going to be her husband and not raise your daughter or your son? How? What are you talking about? Why are we talking about what we're going to do for a baby that's this, the baby is the size of a cashew and y'all already making plans for, for his future? How about we get past the first trimester? How about that? Huh? Isn't that what people are supposed to tell you? Oh, but we couldn't wait to the producers because they didn't know. They couldn't wait until she was at least the second trimester because the show would be over already. I get it now. And then he was like that he has thought about being with her because he still loves her, but being with somebody, loving somebody don't mean you should be with them. And then acting like him being this rude and crass was a part of being a husband. You telling that girl to her face that you love the person that she was just sleeping with six weeks ago is not a part of being, being honest. That's not a part of being a husband. You shouldn't be there because you're you're literally still intertwined into somebody else's life. Disappointing. He also told her that he's discussed all the parenting options with her. Then he wants to gaslight Paige again. Act and talk about some shit. And then she was like, you didn't tell me that you were having these kind of conversations. You never asked me anything about my ex or the baby. What's she supposed to be asking you? So because she didn't ask you anything about it, you decided that you would have conversations with your ex about being in a relationship? Because that makes sense. That is all my notes. Um, I, I thoroughly enjoyed talking to you guys down in the comments. La Bridget, I know you will have something to say. Um, I'm done with that. Um, I'm shooting this video on Thursday. Y'all be proud of me. And I will have it either up tonight or tomorrow morning. If you're watching this on Friday. Yeah. I love y'all so much. <laughs>